everybody. So I'm going to talk to you about the start of genetics and a little bit of genetics vocabulary today. So genetics really began with farmers. Um, so since the day uh, you know, humans have been planting crops, we have been playing around with genes. So in terms of farmers, they were just looking to select their best crops. Um, so if they had like, um, let's say they were, go were growing corn and this year's crop of corn um, produced like really big juicy ears, they're big kernels, then they're going to save some of that, um, the seed from that crop of corn and they'll plant those next year. Um, so you would select for basically different traits that you were looking for as a farmer. Um, so, you know, that was great for a farmer. Um, they were just trying to find like the best crops and, and produce and stuff. But scientists were like, hmm, I wonder what's going on. So if you like, you know, bring these two animals together, why do you get you know, the offspring that you do. Um, so scientists started to look at that. It wasn't until Gregor Mendel that we really carefully studied how traits are passed on. So Gregor Mendel is known as the father of genetics. He was an Augustinian monk. Uh, he was a high school biology teacher. He was an avid gardener. Um, and he was the first person to really study how these traits were passed on, um, which is a concept known as heredity. He chose to use pea plants um, because pea plants are pretty easy to grow. You can grow them very quickly um, and they have characteristics that were easy to observe. So for example, they produce white flowers or purple flowers. They produce green peas or yellow peas. They can be tall or they can be short. So he spent two years of his life growing these pea plants um, until the pea plants produced only the trait he was looking for. So for example, like it only produced green peas every generation. And then what he did is he would cross them. So he would like basically mate two plants together um, by pollinating one with the other's pollen. So he crossed a tall and a short pea plant together. He was expecting, you know, maybe like a mix of plants, some tall, some short, or maybe some would be medium, because um, that might happen. But when he did that cross, all of the offspring ended up being tall, which was really weird, not what he was expecting. So Mendel said that that tall trait um, had to have like, taken over or something in the pea plant. So he said that the stronger trait, the one that showed up, was dominant. And the one that was hidden, so short, the one that went away, he said was recessive. So then he decided he was going to take those tall pea plants that he got from that cross and he was going to mate those together and cross them. And when he did that, most of the offspring were tall pea plants, which is what he was expecting, but there was also some short ones. What in the world was happening? Um, so he was not expecting the short pea plants to reappear. So he said something has to be controlling if the pea plant is tall or short, and he called that something a gene. Um, so now we know a gene is a section of DNA that controls a trait. He obviously had no idea what DNA was at the time, so usually like, it was a something. All right, so genes can come in different forms called alleles. Um, for right now, we're going to say that they come in two forms. Um, that actually is going to change a little bit later on, but we're just going to stick with two for right now. So for example, um, for genes, let's say genes are like ice cream, alleles could be flavors like vanilla or chocolate. Okay, um, so if our gene was how tall the pea plant is, like the gene that controls height, then the alleles would be tall and short, the tall form of the gene and the short form of the gene. We represent the dominant trait in the case of our pea plants that was tall. Right, we represent that gene with a capital letter and the recessive gene, which in the case of our pea plants was the short gene, we represent with a lowercase letter. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about where you get your genes from, um, which is what the video was kind of about yesterday. So when you get your um, chromosomes, you get them from your mother and your father. Okay, so from your mother's egg, you got one half of these chromosomes. 
So this is like the human karyotype. And you got your other half of the chromosomes from your father's, uh, from the sperm. So when the sperm and the egg joined, they formed that first zygote, that first cell um, that would eventually grow into like you. So the chromosomes from your mother and from your father, um, so for example, for this one, they pair up based on the genes that are there. Um, so these are the homologous pairs that you'll see in meiosis. So for example, um, if these were like pea plants, all right, the one from the mother, from the egg, might have a tall gene, and the one chromosome, the matching chromosome from the father, might have a short gene. Okay, so they come in pairs, which is essentially what I'm trying to get at here. Okay, so um, if you have the genes in pairs, all right, if you have one dominant gene, so remember, dominant for our pea plants was the capital A. As long as you have at least one of those, you will have the dominant trait. It takes over. Um, if you have only recessive genes, in this case it was short genes, then you'll see the short trait reappear. Okay, so the key for this is you only need one dominant gene for that trait to show up. If you have two of the same type of gene, so like two big A's or two little A's, that is called homozygous. So the prefix homo means the same, zygous is related to your genes. All right, if you have two different genes, so one dominant and one recessive, so big A, little a, that is called heterozygous. So hetero means different, zygous related to your genes, so different genes. So if you look at some examples here um, of gene combinations, if I have two big A's, those are the same, so this would be homozygous. If I have big D, little d, so dominant and recessive, those are different, so that would be heterozygous. For this one, I have little k, little k, those are the same, so that would be homozygous. For here, I have big M, little m, so dominant, recessive, those are different, so this is heterozygous. Big W, little w, dominant, recessive, those are different from each other, so I have heterozygous. And then big R, big R, so two dominant genes, they are the same, so this would be homozygous. I also want to talk about something called phenotype versus genotype. So genotype, so geno, is what alleles or genes that you have. So in the case of our pea plants, I could have a genotype big A, big A, so two tall genes or I could have big A, little a, a tall gene and a short gene, or a dominant gene and a recessive gene. So genotype is what genes you have. Phenotype is what you look like or what trait you have. So somebody um, a couple years ago related like phenotype to like photograph, if that helps you. Um, so it's what trait you have. So for these gene combinations or genotypes, the phenotype, or what trait they would have, would be tall because each of these genotypes has at least one of the dominant or tall genes in there. So if I gave you an example like this, so in humans, dimples, which I'm representing with a capital D, um, so that's dominant, are dominant over no dimples, which I'm representing with little d. So if I have two dominant genes to dimple genes, then that means the humans would have dimples. If I get to no dimple genes, then that means you would not have dimples. But what if I have one of each? So I have one dominant, one dimple gene, and I have one no dimple gene, one recessive. All right, because there is at least one dominant gene in there, 
the dominant trait will take over and that is the one you see. So in this case, this gene combination would give you dimples. Right, so for tomorrow, what I'm going to ask you to do is a lab. Um, we're going to practice with some of the vocabulary and then make an organism for me. You'll, you're going to need a coin. So if you can make sure you have like a penny or a quarter or something that just has heads and tails on it, um, then you're going to need that for the lab. All right, have a good day, everybody.